Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today I really would like to clear the confusion all about brands branding on Amazon, your brand, a bundle brand, brand registry, brand approval, all the different things right now, because a lot of people are really confused about the exact steps or what you want to do and what you need in order to um, start listing bundles on Amazon, even if you don't have brand registry, because these are possibilities, these are things that you can do. But the thing is, there are definitely some steps that you want to take when you're doing that. So before I start, I want to invite everyone to join our Facebook community. I want you to go to mommy and come com slash join us. And I want you to join the Facebook group. You need a code word. Why? Because we don't like spammers. We don't like people in there that aren't connected and want to learn more about selling on Amazon and have questions and want to get good responses. We don't want to bother everyone with a bunch of spammers or things like that. So you need a code word in order to get in. Your code word this week is hashtag brand. So make sure that you use that because we're talking all about brands today. So make sure that you go to mommy and com slash join us, join our Facebook community and use the hashtag brand as your code word. It's going to ask you for a code word. So remember that. Okay. So let's really talk about what we need to talk about with branding. Honestly, a lot of people have been getting errors. They haven't been able to list bundles. They haven't been able to list brands, um, certain brands because Amazon is is really cracking down on the ability to use different brands within your listing. So this is not detrimental. This doesn't mean anything really huge, but it does mean that there's some steps that everyone needs to be taking. So the best way to fix some of these errors is really to create your own bundle brand and your own custom packaging for your products. Get a trademark and get brand registry. Now, you don't need all of those things all at once in order to do that. Um, you're going to hang in there because I'm going to give you some ways to be able to correct some of these error codes that you might be getting. But I cannot recommend highly enough that you start taking steps towards brand registry. Please don't be that person that in six months from now, I have to say, I told you so when Amazon decides that brand registry is now going to be required, which includes a trademark, which could put your business back nine to 12 months. Now, there is some great news as of today, which is mid April of 2021 um, there. Amazon right now is accepting your filed trademark to get brand registry started. What the difference is, is before Amazon was requiring your serial number that has been registered with the trademark and approved. So what happens is in the approval process takes nine to 12 months with the U.S. government to get your trademark approved. It doesn't matter if you do it yourself or you use a lawyer. It takes about this long because they're busy and they have all these on their desk and it takes time for them. Most of the time it takes three months for them to even look at it, let alone all the research and all the other things that they need to do in order to approve prove your trademark. So here's the thing. Right now, if you file your trademark, meaning that you were able to go through the registry, realize that no one has the same trademark as you, file for your either word mark or logo mark or design mark is the official terminology. Um, they will accept that you file this because you will be issued a serial number. That does not mean that your trademark was approved by the government. It means that you've started the process. And now Amazon is willing to accept that you've started the process and help you start opening up your brand registry. Here's the thing. If your trademark does not get approved, they're going to remove all of your, your um, listings or they're going to revoke your brand registry access. So just so you know, until it, it's kind of a it's not risky necessarily, but not every trademark is approved. There's lots of reasons why trademarks are rejected. Maybe there's brand confusion. Maybe it's too ambiguous. Maybe it's too subjective and they don't just um, approve everybody for everything. So because of that, it can take a really long time. Amazon right now is accepting the fact that you actually even filed it. And so that's really um, a good step for right now. Now that could change at any moment because Amazon, you know, sometimes allows these things and then realizes that they shot themselves in the foot and they need to move forward. So there are some steps that you need to, you can take to get this done right now. But for once, they're actually giving us a little bit of a leg up. So if you don't have brand registry yet and you have the idea, then you need to 
pursue it. So what is it that you need to do to pursue brand registry? You need a brand. You need to create a brand. Now I'm going to give you the best piece of advice when it comes to branding on Amazon is if you are creating a a product and your product line and you want to be in stores someday and you want to sell your goods at Target or you want to sell them at Walmart or whatever else and you want to be in part of the big box supply chain, then you're going to want to create a very poignant brand that could be used in all sorts of categories and all those things. Now, most of the clients I've talked to, most of you out there are just trying to create a bundle brand for yourself so that you can use the techniques that I've taught in the wholesale bundle system to create your own bundles in a way where your competition's not going to jump off and jump on your listings and you're going to own the buy box and all the good stuff that comes along with wholesale bundling. So most of you are in that category. So what you need is to make sure, number one, that that trademark is not taken and number two, that it is generic enough. So when I joke about Kristen's favorite things being a brand, um, it's not actually a brand. It's just an example I'm using, but actually it wouldn't be a bad brand because most people aren't going to be trademarking Kristen's favorite things spelled the way I'm spelling it in an, in a specific category. The U S government trademark process requires you to choose at least one category of goods in which you are trademarking. So you don't get the trademark for everything. You really just get a trademark for one particular product or a particular product category. Now that has nothing to do with the categories on Amazon. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. If Amazon accepts your brand registry, you can sell that brand in any category on Amazon. So don't confuse the two. Your brand that you're registering for the US government, you're registering with that really because it's the rules that Amazon's requiring. So you need to pick a category that's as closely related to something and it's better if you already are using the brand within your um, Amazon store. They like to see it in use because they're more likely to approve your brand when you're using it already. So if Kristen's favorite things, gift baskets are available for sale on Amazon and I decide to trademark Kristen's favorite things, I can go to Amazon and I can show or I can go to the trademark office and file for this and show them here is where I'm using this brand already. People are already recognizing this brand. I'm selling it. It's, it's for sale. It's for use in e-commerce. So that is more likely to get approved because you have proof of concept. You have proof that you're using it, that it's out there, that they can verify um, this transaction. So there's something that you need to do. Um, so making sure, number one, that you do a quick search at the USPTO and you make sure that you are that the brand that you're considering using isn't already being used because obviously you'd be violating someone else's trademark at that point. So making sure that it's used. But I, I suggest you do something like an acronym, something off the wall, something that's generic enough to where you could literally sell auto parts and baby blankets in the same store and it's not going to cause confusion. I mean, if you're going to be selling... Um, if, if you're going to be selling, you know, auto parts and baby blankets in the same store, you wouldn't want your brand to be Kristen's auto store because then you're selling baby blankets and that doesn't make any sense. So at that point, you want to make sure that you're using something generic like JTXF um, Inc. or um, use an acronym of some sort. If you've got three kids and there are JJ and F you know, maybe it's um, a JFJ or something like that, that you can use as an, as something like that. You can use words like gift. You can use like market, marketplace, mercantile, you know, all these different types of generic words that you can use in order to not create any brand confusion, but also to have something that's wide enough to where you can sell a diversified products without having to have multiple trademarks because it takes a long time and it's expensive. I've heard a lot of people ask, well, should you get different trademarks and different brands for different things? You could, if you're trying to build a clothing line, for example, but you're selling other bundles and grocery or something like that, you might want to have um, a clothing line, se separate brand, a separate trademark, things like that. But you can also use your trademark as a parent company as far as like the manufacturer and brand and still give your your new products different brand names. So it's it's 
there's a little bit of confusion there. There's more in the training in the wholesale bundle system uh, about creating your brand and things like that. So if you're a wholesale bundle student, you want to check that out and watch that in detail. Um, there's an hour and some minutes of different examples and creating a bundle brand and everything else. So you need a bundle brand. You need to get the trademark process started and you need, in order to do all this, you need custom packaging. To even list your bundle on Amazon, they're going to ask you for custom packaging because the moment that you put the brand name in there as Kristen's favorite things or whatever brand you're choosing, Amazon's gonna give you an error code and say, we don't recognize this brand. You either have to become brand registered or file for an exemption and show us your brand. They want to see that this is a brand. now. Whether it's your brand or a brand new brand to Amazon, it's still required. So if you bought a really cool soy candle from a lady down the road who makes these at, at the craft show or something, and she has, you know, Susie's soy candles, and you want to sell Susie's soy, soy candles on Amazon, you're still going to need to show them a picture of the product and or packaging that says Susie's soy candles on them because Amazon doesn't recognize this brand and they want to see the legitimacy of it. So that's what they're asking. By the way, if you want to file for a trademark, my number one, the official trademark lawyer of mommy income is royaltrademarklaw.com. My friend, Ben Becker, my main man, he he is a Chiefs fan, so he automatically qualifies. He is literally, no, he's he's awesome. He's a trademark attorney and he is fantastic. Royaltrademarklaw.com. You can talk to Ben and he will help you get your trademark process started. He's very reasonably priced and he's very knowledgeable on all this. So make sure if you want to go that route, which I highly recommend using a lawyer, because if you don't understand or write or read legalese very well and they want to send it back to you um, because there's something missing or whatever else it's best to have a lawyer on your side so those are the things that you're going to need in order to a do your gti and exemption get a bundle listed get it trademarked and move through the process i hear you I understand what you're probably thinking. Why should I go through all that trouble and all that expense? Isn't there an easier way to do this? Oh, friends. If this was easy and cheap, then everyone would do it, right? It's not easy and cheap. It's not. If you want easy and cheap, go to McDonald's. <laughs> Seriously, this is business and not just that. Do you want a quick, easy dollar? Great, there's methods to make quick, easy dollars. Go to Facebook Marketplace and sell furniture. Like, I mean, people buy stuff on Facebook Marketplace constantly right now. It's a good way to flip something fast. Go to Salvation Army or, or Goodwill or thrifting and buy some pieces of furniture, clean them up and resell them. At the Goodwill, they sell couches for $20 near our house. So literally you could rent a steam cleaner for another $20, steam clean a carpet or steam clean it and probably flip it for a hundred. So seriously, if you need quick, fast cash, there's other ways. Maybe I can do a whole separate episode on quick, fast cash, things to flip that you can get your money's worth right now. But this is a long-term sustainable business. And because of that, you need to do things right. And you need to do them up front, and you need to be right about it. So so that that income continues to come in even when you're sleeping, even when you're on vacation, even when you're not hustling and grinding every single day to make every single dollar. That is long-term sustainable business. When your money is working for you and your business is working without you working on it 24 seven, that's what we want here. If you want the quick dollar, DM me and we can talk about like how you can make some quick dollars. But this is literally a long-term sustainable business that you're building. And because of that, you want to do it the right way. And the right way is usually not easy and usually not cheap. It doesn't mean it's going to cost you an arm or leg in your firstborn, but this is real legitimate business. And guess what? Everybody out there, they should be doing these, doing these things above board and right up front. So I want you guys to be doing the same thing because I never realized, this is why I'm telling you guys this now, is that when I first started this business, I had no idea. I was literally doing the quick flip because at the time, eBay was about the only opportunity I had to do some quick flips and start selling things. And as I moved into doing Amazon and more, I was just trying to put food on the table. I had no idea I was building a long-term sustainable business. I knew that I wanted the income to continue. 
But as I grew, I started thinking about the future and I knew that things like retail arbitrage weren't going to be sustainable long term. I was growing and I needed more inventory. I needed more money. I switched to wholesale. I got more inventory, but then the margins were super thin and unstable and the competition is fierce. Everybody wants to race to the bottom and get the bottom of the barrel profits and, and fight for the pennies on the dollar. So when I started creating bundles, that was finally the business model that I, need, I knew I could grow with huge margins and no competition. I've been bundling for over five years now and the growth has been amazingly strong. I am knocking out bundles left and right that are selling at my, my new target right now is really $15 or more in profit per bundle. Like if it's not making me at least that, I really second guess whether or not it's worth the work. But I built up to that. I didn't start with that. I started with retail arbitrage, just like most of you, and then moved forward. So the reality was, is that I didn't even realize that I was building something that could be actually sellable one day until I spoke with a friend, someone that was interviewing me actually on a podcast. And he had told me that he had built his business and then sold it for over a million dollars in just three years. And I was like, yo, tell me more. And so we got talking and of course, um, I talked to his guy just to see, you know, the guy that ended up selling his business for him and realized that he told me with my unique wholesale bundle model that my business could be worth way more. And so we had it evaluated and it was worth between three and $4 million. Now we're not selling our business yet. We're still working on it and we're still growing it and we're still growing a couple of our brands and launching and releasing products. But friends, this is why we put the work in because guess what? Retail arbitrage businesses are not sellable assets because they're not reliable supply chains. If, if you go to a business broker and they want to buy your business and they say, okay, well, give us a list of your suppliers. And you say, well, I run to Target and Walmart and Best Buy and Rite Aid and Walgreens every week. And I stock up on all the stuff that they have left over and I hit the clearance aisles and I do this all around. That's an amazing business model for you and yourself. And you want to do that, but your business broker is going to be like, um, there's no proof of concept in that. There's no sustainability in that. Um, you know, these stores could go down, they could change their suppliers, they could, all, all kinds of things can happen. That is not sustainable. So that's not going to be reputable in order to be sellable in a way that someone wanted to. So wholesale bundles is unique and proven business model that is very attractive to buyers because it's a built-in system. It's a process. They can learn it just as much as you can, or they can hire somebody to learn it as much as you can of going through a step-by-step -step process in order to research and make bundles every single time. This is why we put the work in because it's worth it. It doesn't mean that it's easy or fast, but it means it's worth it in the end. So would you rather have a couple thousand dollars now or a couple million dollars later? I'm going with the millions, y'all. Millions. That's just what I'm saying. So let's talk about the easiest way to get this done or the best way to get this done. Because you might be getting some of those error codes and this is going to be due to brand issues. And let's define brand according to Amazon. It doesn't have to be a well-known brand. It simply has to have a name. So here's an example of like a non-branded item. Like most of the time, paper clips or a tarp or something like that. Some things you can buy at the dollar store or a glass vase. You know, it's just a glass vase that you can buy at Dollar Tree or you could buy at Target or you could buy wherever, but it's just a glass vase. It doesn't really have a high brand name. It probably doesn't even come in a box. It's literally just has a little UPC code on it and it says glass vase, six inches tall, something like that. But another example would be like a pair of sandals that almost every single pair of shoes has a brand. It doesn't mean it's a brand that you would all recognize recognize. It doesn't mean it's like Nine West or Jimmy Choo or something like that, but literally it has a brand most of the time, even if you don't recognize it. Your brand is going to be a brand that you create and it's going to be a recognizable brand if it passes the qualifications of Amazon. And what they say passes the qualification is professional packaging. They want to see your product with the name on it or the product and or packaging with the name on it. Professional packaging that has 
permanently affixed logos and, and details. So that means no stickers, no stamps, no brown boxes with some tape on it as much as that can be used later on. Once your brand is approved, you can change your packaging in a certain way to make it a little bit more economical for yourself. But they want to see legitimate, not mock-up pictures, legitimate pictures of your product. So that's what we mean when we talk about brand. Anything that does not have that or that has an actual brand and a brand name, that those are the things that you're going to be looking for. Okay. Brand registry versus brand approval. So many of you maybe have gotten a 5665 error code from Amazon because you're trying to list something and maybe you're using your own brand and they say, we don't recognize this brand. So brand registry is your eligibility means you need a U.S. trademark. It's highly recommended to create your bundle brand and apply for the trademark. This is the best level of protection for your account, for your bundles, for your brand, for your listings, everything. So literally put it on your calendar to, to seek it, okay? Brand approval is when you are, the brand is new to Amazon and they've never heard of it and they want to verify that it's a real brand, that it actually exists and they have a verification process. So if you say you need to have, submit your brand for approval, they're not saying brand registry. They suggest brand registry, but if you are ineligible for registry, then they say, get your brand approved. This does not require a trademark, but it doesn't carry the same brand protection as it would if you had your full on brand registry. So remember what we talked about in the beginning that you can start that process and start gaining some of that protection before you actually officially registered um, with the government to get your official trademark. So brand approval is really when you're submitting a new brand to Amazon, they don't recognize it. And they say, show us this brand, prove its legitimacy, send us two to nine photos of the picture, real life images, either in your hand or on a table. They don't want digital mock-ups. They want to see your product packaging and or product together. And they want to verify that it's a real brand. So let's talk about what's allowed and not allowed in order to clean up some confusion about brands and about bundles and about bundling brands together. I know that is a mouthful, is it not? Bundling brands together. Um, so when it comes to that, your brand and using other people's brands within your bundle, because in the Facebook group, there's been a lot of confusion about this. Um, one gentleman was asking about how is it that you're allowed to take somebody else's manufactured product out of the packaging, put it in your own packaging, and then call it yours. That is not what we're doing. So let me be very clear about what we're not doing with bundles. We are not rebranding somebody else's product. We are doing wholesale bundling. Wholesale bundling means you are taking other people's products that are made branded or not branded. Most of them are branded. It's just a matter of, you know, if you buy something from Alibaba, it doesn't, it's probably, some of it might be branded, some of it may not be, but those are still wholesale items. You are not um, manufacturing something brand new. It's not a private label product, could be a white label product, which is where you put your own brand. And those are those are white label products or when you put your own brand on something that already exists. That's perfectly fine and legal and whatever else. And you can use white label products too. But say you're taking a, um, you know, I'm taking Fisker scissors, okay? And I'm creating a office supply bundle, okay? So Kristen's favorite things is the brand of my office supply bundle. And my title is office supply bundle, including... Fisker scissors, big pens, Sharpie markers, uh, sticky notes, you know, things like that. So I am not rebranding and owning the brands of these other things. I'm creating a new product, which is an office supply bundle set. And I'm using these other products in there. So I'm not rebranding their products. I'm selling a product, Kristen's favorite things, office supply gift set or office supply set and using other branded products within that. Now, the problem with some of this 
is that occasionally you run into the issue where one of these brands is restricted, or if it's not, first of all, don't use products that are restricted. If you're, if a brand is restricted, don't try to put their products in your bundles because that's a recipe for disaster. They're not going to let it through. But occasionally something has a conflict because you're putting a brand name in your title or in your description somewhere, but in your brand field, when you're listing your item, you put Kristen's favorite things. So Amazon's algorithm says, hey, you said this was branded by Kristen's favorite things, but you also said you have Sharpie markers and these other things in there. And somehow this doesn't align. So what happens is the brands don't match. So they would say the product ID or the brand you're using doesn't match and it would give you an error code. So when it comes to things like that, remember that attributes sell bundles. It's not about the brands of the items that are in there. Although those can be important and can be listed in other places, in your title, in your bullets is usually the place where there's going to be caused some brand confusion there. So especially in your title, but more also in bullet points and description. So think about that when you're adding these things to your bundles, the attributes, um, the office supply gift set, including markers, sticky notes, paper clips, whatever it is, those are the things that sell the bundle. It's really not the brand. So if you're trying, if brand is the number one attribute that you're trying to get out there because you think it's going to sell faster because it's got a brand that people recognize, those are usually when you run into the most trouble because guys, you don't have to sell well-known brands to sell on Amazon. There's a million products out there daily that people are buying on attributes. I have a whole list of stuff on my in my Amazon cart or things that I've already purchased in the past 24 hours that have I have no idea. I've never heard of the brand, but it's what I wanted. This is something I'm looking for. I need an HDMI cord. I need a case for this. I need a travel bag for this. I need the, you know certain colors, attributes. I'm like pink magenta jacket. Like, you know, those are things that people are looking for rather than a brand. So yeah, people search for brands. Of course they do. I mean, I don't live with my head in the sand. I know that people search for brands sometimes, but most of the time on Amazon, there are more often than not, not searching for a brand. They're just searching for products that they want to buy. This is why bundles work because people are typing in, you know, cute spring centerpiece for your table. Those are the things they're looking for. Does that cute centerpiece have a brand? No, they're just looking for a cute spring-like centerpiece for their kitchen table or for their entryway table. So attributes sell bundles, not brands. So if each of the items that you have in your bundle have a brand and you're getting the error code, you simply need to reach out to Amazon, let them know the brand, your brand, Kristen's favorite things, whatever it is, and a couple images of the product in real world images, and that the brand must be permanently affixed to the packaging. And they're going to usually approve your brand. Now, sometimes there's error codes that talk about the generic or things like that. They must have evidence showing that the item is permanently affixed or has the branding on it. Otherwise, they're going to deem it as generic. If your HDMI cord doesn't come in a bag with some branding on it and it doesn't have branding on the actual cord itself, Amazon will say that that is not labeled and that is actually generic. Generic's not that big of a deal when it comes to branding. A lot of people freak out of like, oh my gosh, if I list it as generic, then it's this and this. And that. Well, if you list it as generic, anybody can jump on it. So there's, there's that. But if you list it as generic, sometimes things are pretty generic and it's okay because people buy generic things. It's better to have a brand, I think, because then you can start setting yourself apart from other people. You can have repeat customers. You can protect your listings when you have a brand, but generic is pretty acceptable as well. And that's also a way to get things listed. But if you put generic in your brand, don't use brand names because then it's not generic. So if you're selling a candy bundle and you say it's generic, but then you say Skittles and Starburst and things like that, then clearly you're going to get an error because that's not generic that has brands. So that's a little bit of common sense that we need to be using with certain things like that. Now, sometimes you'll get error codes like 5661 where you might be misusing a brand. And that's the example we just talked about with the whole generic versus um, certain words. Now, 
I hear some of you now. I hear you in the Facebook group. I've seen you in the hub asking some questions like this. It's totally fine because Amazon sometimes doesn't keep their own word and doesn't enforce their own policies. And I get questions like this every single day. Questions say, well, I saw a listing that had this, 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 and this, and it had the brands and it was listed. It was perfectly fine. How come I can't do that? Well, you can. And you can try and you can try to circumvent the rules and you can try to list bundles, but know the risks involved. Because if you try to list a bundle with brands that you're trying to get around the rules or trying to put up a listing just like everyone else did, guess what? Listings that have been there for five years and are still selling, Amazon doesn't take those listings down and start enforcing policy. I wish they did, but they don't. So people that are doing it, that have been doing it for years, doesn't mean that they're doing it right or correctly or according to policy. And also doesn't mean that Amazon's not either watching or looking or knowing. What I'm here to tell you is that the best way to continue making profit on Amazon is to make sure you're complying to all the rules because you don't want them to drop a hammer on you one day and say, oh, sorry, you didn't comply to this rule. We're taking your best selling listing down because you didn't follow the right branding codes or the, the branding opportunities. So do it right and do it in that way. Number two is just because you see it doesn't mean it's allowed. So people do lots of stuff on Amazon that's not allowed. And eventually they will find you out and they will kick your listing off or the suspend it, or they'll ask you for compliance or they'll ask you for invoices or they'll ask you for something. And if you can't prove above board and legit, your listing is going to be dead, including all the inventory that you might have there. So if you're going to do risky bundles like that and try to just circumvent the rules a little bit and try to get some of those brand names out there and maybe you'll slide under the radar, you'll, you need to know that you're assessing your own risk and you're taking the risk that you're taking there. So it's just up to you to be able to do that. I suggest selling bundles that meet needs and solve problems for customers and have nothing to do with branding. Because those are the less amounts of trouble. And guys, look around. I literally challenge you to do this. Like right now, after you hear this episode, I want you to just take five minutes and walk from room to room in your house and make a list of all the things that you have purchased in your home. Because you bought everything there or it was gifted to you um, that don't have brands or don't have brands that you recognize or care about. It's like, what is that? Okay, yeah. I got Nike shoes on my feet right now. Okay, great. I like Nike shoes. I like Nike memory foam flip-flops, period. But there's a lot of stuff in, in and around me just looking around the room right now that literally has no brand. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, there's like three or four or five. Okay, there's probably 10 different notebooks and sticky notes and things around here. No brand, no notebook. I don't even know what those brands are. I'm looking, I see three or four waste baskets. Okay, brand, but like most people are looking for size or style or color. They don't care what brand it is. I don't care what brand my waste basket is. I just want to make sure that it holds my waist and fits in underneath my desk or wherever it's supposed to go. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Get it out of your head that you have to sell well-known brands in order to make money. You don't. Attributes sell bundles, period. So this is what I want you to really start thinking about when it comes to these things, these error codes that you're getting. You're getting them because there's brand confusion. Do not misuse information. Don't try to put brands inside of other brands. Now, there are some big brands that we can talk about that, that you're able to use the name in a certain way. So this is the compatible with. Now you can only use this if it's appropriate. So this is no black hat. This is not circumventing rules. This is simply compatible with. So I'll give you an example. My daughter got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas and she absolutely loves it. But she also is very girly and wants pink everything. And so she wanted a pink case and some pink accessories for her Nintendo Switch. So of course I go to Amazon and I type in pink Nintendo Switch accessories. And lo and behold, this wonderful bundle comes up and it's made by some brand I've never heard of, but it's got like the screen protector, a case, the little knob covers that the little stylus, like all this different stuff that all has pink. And it says 
such and such accessory pack compatible with Nintendo Switch models, blah, blah, blah. So this is a generic product, just like iPhone cases. iPhone cases, nine out of 10 of them are not made by iPhone. They're not made by Apple and they're compatible with iPhones. So that's how you're allowed to use the brand as long as it's compatible with, or like things like air filters or vacuum bags and vacuum bag belts and you know things like generic stuff like that that are compatible with certain models but they don't have to be branded by this for certain thing. This is how generic can be generic because things can be compatible with. And so when we say the word generic, that means zero brand, but like the Walmart's Equate is their brand. So that's actually not generic. That's actually a brand. Equate is, is Walmart's house brand or their store brand or whatever it is. So it actually is a brand. So don't say that that's generic. Don't get those confused. So these are the ways that you can use things if they're compatible with. So making sure that you don't use that in an incorrect way, but if you're making something like that or selling a bundle like that as accessories to something, you can use the words compatible with. The best, best way to fix all of these errors and not get them anymore is to create your own bundle brand, create your custom packaging, get them trademarked and get brand registry. Then you can walk through bundles with ease because you don't have to worry about hijackers. You don't have to worry about the different things that can happen when people are hijacking your listings or brands take you down. Now, does it mean perfection? No. Does it mean that Amazon or brands can come and decide that they no longer want you to use their brands in the bundle? Sure, anything can happen. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you that this is 100% ironclad every time because I don't own all the brands. I don't own Amazon. So I can't tell you what they're going to do or not do, but I can tell you right now that it is the least amount of risk of our, it, it's the least amount of risk to getting your bundles listed and using these products. And a lot, I mean, I have catalog upon catalog upon catalog of products where companies do not care whether you sell their product on Amazon or not, whether you sell their product in a bundle or not, they could care less. Once you buy it from them, they are in the business of wholesale and they could care less what you do with it. And some brands are very, very particular and say, no way, no how, no Amazon. Okay, great. There's billions of other brand products out there. So don't worry about those. Worry about what you can do, not what you can't do or what's restricted. So if you are a wholesale bundle student, you already have all of these details in a de this, this whole course. It's creating a brand for your bundles inside of wholesale bundle system. It's in your student portal. You can go rewatch that, see some examples, know and understand what's allowed and required here. If you are not a wholesale bundle student, I suggest that you get wholesale bundles. Yes, you can continue listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos and kind of get the gist of it. But don't you wanna do it right? Don't you want to do it correctly and have a process that you can repeat over and over again and have um, confidence that you're doing it right and that you're listing proper bundles? Get the wholesale bundle system. It comes with this new training. It's going to be updated on a yearly basis so that you get access to the newest, freshest information. And the newest one is co coming up soon. I'm going to be updating um, the entire wholesale bundles course to make sure it's all fresh and new. So um, the, those of you guys that are students will already have access to that. Um, so it really, it also includes that framework, that custom ironclad research process that you can just repeat over and over again to build your bundle. So mommyincome.com slash system to get your wholesale bundle system and get this create, creating a brand for your bundle, um, your bundles. You've got to be able to do this. Be legit guys. You want to create a business that could be worth over a million dollars that you can sell and maybe retire. Some of you guys are closer to retirement and maybe you want to retire and do something better with your life. Are you building a sustainable business, a legitimate sustainable business that you can then decide when you retire that you can sell to somebody for big money? That is what I suggest you do because closing your store is an option but then you close down all the hard work you did when you can pass the torch to somebody who's willing to take that on and you can get some money for it. You're building an asset. So I suggest that you start being as legitimate as possible so that you can have all your duckies in a row. And then when you're ready to exit for whatever reason, to start something new, to start something different, to get some extra cash, to retire, 
that your business will be in good sellable condition. So don't forget Royal Trademark Law if you want to reach out to Ben and get your trademark there and mommyincome.com slash system to get your wholesale bundle system. Thank you so much for being here at the Amazon Files. I'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.